All right, we've got 20 minutes. Let's do it. My name is Rocky Lutka. I am uh, co chair of uh, VS Live and uh, also the CTO at Magenic. And I'm here to talk to you today in 20 minutes about some concepts, ideas, techniques for moving from .NET framework into .NET standard. Um, or, or for a lot of you, you might say, well, you need to get to .NET Core, but I'm specifically talking about .NET Standard. I will explain why. I also am you know, not taking questions. I'm just kind of flying through here because it's only 20 minutes, people, right? So .NET has become this run once, write once, run everywhere sort of a thing, which it seems like I heard that once before. Um, you know, Java said that, and of course Java turned out to be a write once, test everywhere sort of a thing, right? And let's not kid ourselves, there's some truth to that in the Microsoft, you know, .NET space as well, right? But, you know, hopefully it's not too bad and, and done in a good way. So Microsoft, of course, is taking everything and moving it into .NET Core, slowly but surely which means that all of us are going to have to do the same thing, right? And that's true in, in some case, eventually, whether you're doing a Windows Forms or WPF or ASP.NET um, or Xamarin or whatever it is, I mean, slowly but surely, this is where things are going. And so the question is, how do we do that migration? And the answer really lies in this technology that we've got called .NET Standard. Or, or a lot of people just call it net standard, right? And so to solve this problem, basically if you look at this slide and you see that row of purple across there, these are all of the concrete implementations of .NET that you might have to deal with. The most common clearly is the .NET framework. You know, 4.6, 4.7, whatever level you're at, right? Maybe even 4.0 or 4.5, right? I mean, maybe even 3.5 or 2. I, I don't know, right? Four, I put 4.6.1 here because that's actually a magic number. .NET Framework 4.6.1 is the first point at which you become compatible with .NET Standard. So, so step one for any migration strategy is at the very least you have to be running .NET 4.6.1 or higher. Right, so if you're still running .NET 4 or 3 or 2, right, you, for step one, we have to get up to at least a reasonably modern version of .NET itself. Right? Once you get to 4.6.1, then you can start to do the things I'm going to talk about in this session. Okay? Now, if you're already running in .NET Core, like you're building stuff on ASP.NET Core or .NET Core console apps or whatever else, it's important to understand that that is a different implementation of .NET. There's the .NET Framework and there's .NET Core. But .NET Core supports .NET Standard. All right? Also, if you're running any sort of modern version of Xamarin, you're actually running on top of Mono. So Xamarin and Mono really are, are kind of the same thing in this context. The current versions of Mono also support .NET Standard. And finally, for all zero of you who are building UWP apps, Oh, that's rude, isn't it? Um, but yeah, the, the, the small number that might be writing uh, UWP apps, UWP actually runs on a slight variation of .NET Core, but it is also compatible with .NET Standard. And so see, here, here's the thing, .NET Standard becomes this common um, language or target that were you to write your code in .NET Standard, your code will run on the full .NET framework, it'll run on .NET Core, it'll run on Mono, and it'll run on UWP. If you write your codes, and, and I go down this road, see, because a lot of people that talk to me are like, man, we got to get off .NET, you know, .NET framework into .NET Core. It's like, no, that is not what you need to do. Not. What you need to do is get off .NET framework into .NET standard. Because if you get to .NET Standard, then you can run on the .NET Framework, on .NET Core, and on Xamarin. Okay? So this is your target, is to go to .NET Standard. 
I think this might be my, like my last slide, right? Then we're going to go into techniques, okay? How do we get there? So some time ago, Microsoft had this concept or techni you know, technique technology uh, called portable class libraries, which I'm sure many of you used or at least encountered. And the idea was that inside of Visual Studio, you would create a portable class library type project, right? And it would come up with a nice little dialogue and say, hey, what platforms do you want to support? You, know, you say .NET and Xamarin and Windows Phone. And, and as soon as you pick Windows Phone, you can't hardly do anything. Right, but, but the, the point is that portable class libraries were designed to help you not write code that the worst platform possible couldn't write, if that makes sense, right? And, and so it was a useful technique, but it also turned out that because there were at one point, so I, I'm also the author of an open source framework called CSLA.net that I've been you know, working on for uh, well, it predates .NET, actually, so I've been working on it for over 20 years. There was a point about two years ago when to build CSLA to make it available to all of you through NuGet, I had to build it for 11 different targets, 11 different flavors of .NET. Wow, right? Just stop and think about that. That if you wanted to cover all of .NET and make it any framework available to everybody, you had to compile it 11 different times, right? And so .NET standard basically, and, and, and part of it was, see, portable class libraries were intended to make this better, but it made it worse. Because I had to compile it for .NET 4, .NET 4.5, .NET 4.6, um, Xamarin, and um, what, what else? Oh, UWP, and it seems like there was another one out there. And then, because Xamarin was using PCLs, I had to compile it for Portable Class Library Profile 111 and 259. Why? Who knows? That's what Xamarin decided to use for their templates. So for me, see, it actually just made it worse, right? Just these random numbers. And so now, and I, I kid you not, now, because of .NET standard, I actually compile it for three targets. I compile it for .NET 4, .NET 4.5, and .NET standard. Because everybody's got covered by .NET standard, except for a whole bunch of people that are still using .NET 4 and 4.5. Right, so this is a big deal. Supportable class libraries basically came and went. If you're still using them, part of your plan has to be that you're not going to use them anymore. All right? So that leaves us with these other two options, right? One is to use, just, just move to .NET standard, and that gets you across all of the different versions of .NET, right? Um, and that really is, is the end goal, just get to .NET standard. Woohoo! But, Here's a question for you guys. How many of you are going to be able to do a big bang sort of a thing where you take your existing .NET framework app or apps, your, your application catalog, you're just going to stop working on them for a while while you port them all over to .NET standard? No, nobody, right? And so this is the trick, and, th and this is why I'm done with my slides, I believe, at this point. Um, in fact, it, it's, let's just minimize that puppy. Because what we really need to talk about is how is it that I get from a legacy code base, can I use that word? A, a legacy .NET code base. That sounds bad though, doesn't it? We just, we're in the middle of writing .NET code, you can't call it legacy. Anyway, legacy .NET code base, and I've somehow got to get it into this new world, right? So. To demonstrate this, and I'm going to copy-paste some code from a working sample, but I just want to start from scratch, right, <laughs> just so we can kind of, uh, kind of walk through how this whole thing might work. And so let's say, for um, argument, oop, I don't want a new file. I want a new uh, project. Hello. And so we're currently talking about you know, some sort of a Windows class, uh, where's class library, there we go. So I'm talking about a .NET Framework class library. So this is what you would have today, right? 
And we'll, we'll give it a really cool name like a VSL um, MCO by, for airport name here, right? And again, I want to reiterate this, I am presupposing you are at least at .NET Framework 4.6.1 or higher. And this is like the minimum bar to play, okay? So we'll create this thing. Yeah, those are all fine. I'm, I'm creating our legacy code base, just, just so we're clear on what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go in here to the references, and I'm going to manage some NuGet packages. And, and what kinds of things might, might we be using today? Let's see here. An error occurred. Uh-oh. We don't like no errors occurring. I need to be on the internets. Oh, come on. AV problems. Go away. Okay. Dismiss. Well, it, I'm not sure dismissing helped. Let's try it again. Should have tested that before I got on stage. Come on. Oh, seriously? No, oh, the internets are there. Visual Studio is just going to be... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an embarrassing little snag. Moving on. Come on. I, had, I was on a roll, too. I had a narrative going. An error has occurred. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So, pro probably, you know, New Newton Soft is a good bet. We probably use that, right? Um, and, um, uh, that seems reasonable. Another thing that we probably use is uh, Entity Framework, right? And uh, we probably use the Entity Framework. I mean, who doesn't use the Entity Framework? People who want their application to run fast. <laughs> All right. So I've, so I've got that. Now this, and this is just a class library, right? And so in here, let's, let's add a class and we'll, um, where's my class? There we go. <coughs> and we'll call it uh, person. And we'll add another class here. And we'll call it um, person factory, maybe, right? And we'll get rid of class one because we don't really care about that. And here's where I'm just going to copy paste some code for uh, the sake of, uh, whoops. So I've got a person class. And in my person class, I'm not doing anything very uh, particularly fancy here, right? I'm just saying, hey, look, it's a person class. It's got some properties. But it does, in fact, understand. And I'm not saying whether this is good or bad coding. This is just like the kind of legacy code you might have. So inside of my business library or whatever, I'm using uh, JSON.NET. So yay, we're happy, right? Then also, um, in my uh, Yeah, and, and if I've got people, I probably have a um, person factory. Oh, did I copy this into the wrong? Oh, my. Oh, my. Let's fix myself up then, because, boy, that was a mistake. So in my person class... I have my person stuff, and in my person factory, then I've got some code that uses, and of course actually talks to the database, but this uses an entity framework type, right? I mean, no way am I trying to create for us a complete app. I'm trying to demonstrate some important concepts, right? But you can hopefully envision that this is like a real type of DLL that you might have, right? Uses some stuff. It should be the case now that I can build this thing um, and, it, and it should build because I've got my NuGet package references, right? Yay. Are we all in agreement that we have a legacy code base? Right? So what I want to do now 
is I want to somehow get it to .NET standard without doing the Big Bang. Right, because we, we agree Big Bangs just can't happen. So what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to add another new project to this solution and I'm going to go to .NET standard and I'm going to create a .NET standard class library and I'm going to call this thing VSL uh, MCO uh, dot <coughs> NS right, or NS2, .NET standard 2, okay? No, I didn't want a new solution. What did I do? Seriously, Microsoft, you're not helping me here. You created a new project, not add a new project. I want to add a new project. <laughs> and I want to call it VSLMCO da or dot, dot NS2. All right. This is what happens. I'm, I'm worried because I got 20 minutes. Now I only have four minutes left, I think, right? So here I am. This is not going to work, right? Get rid of the class library. So as you might imagine, oh, and then I'm going to add dependencies, right? And so here we get to the point where things get really fun because I can add Newtonsoft, okay? And that's because the current versions of Newtonsoft work across both. This is a point I want to illustrate. But you might be using a version of Newton Soft version 9 or 8. You're going to have to upgrade that to version 10, 11, 12 before this works. Okay? So your NuGet packages that have become outdated, you're going to have to move up to a version of NuGet package that exists on .NET standard as well as on .NET framework. Right. So that's, that's another little check part box for you. But now Entity Framework, see Entity Framework is problematic because there is no Entity Framework for .NET uh, standard, the old Entity Framework. Instead, what Microsoft did is they created um, Entity Framework Core, wherever you are. So this is a new and different Entity Framework. So I'm gonna install this. Now, as you might imagine, um, oh man, well let me switch to the demo that's done. Um, as you might imagine, um, my .NET standard library that I've got here that has those dependencies, right, um, on Entity Framework Core and on Project New or on Newtonsoft, um, can't, it can run the same Newtonsoft code, but it cannot run the same Entity Framework code, okay? And so I can't just copy the co code files over. And even if I could just copy the code files over, now I duplicated the code files. Bad idea. So what you're going to do is create something called a shared library. And to do that, inside of your project, you're going to say you'd like to add a new project. You go up here to the search bar and you type the word shared. And then you see here, and if you haven't used shared projects, this is your opportunity, right? So shared project C sharp and you add this to your solution, okay? And you end up with what I've got here, which is a shared library. Now shared libraries get this cool little double diamond icon, but they never actually get built. So what you do is you take your code files out of the original legacy file. Notice that I have no code files here. That's because I dragged them into the shared library, okay? And then I referenced from the shared library, I, or sorry, from my legacy app, I referenced the shared library. This is the point at which your heart is stopping and you're glad that you have source control. Okay? So the, I just want to be clear, we had a legacy code base. I added the shared project solution, copied all the files over to it, deleted the files from the original. And then I added this reference that you see on the screen here, and then I rebuilt my legacy DLL, and it was unchanged. This is a leap of faith. <laughs> but trust me, if you do this, this will, you can go home and do this right now. Make sure you have the stuff in source control so you don't get fired. <laughs> but you can, you can go home, you can take your existing solution, create a shared project, copy your code files over, delete the original, 
add a reference from the original project to your shared, rebuild and you're done. You've gone nowhere. But you've, you've moved all your code to a shared spot. Now you can create a .NET standard library that has no code files in it and notice that it too references the shared library. Okay? And so now I can build this and it should build the same exact code except it'll build it for .NET standard. Except that it won't build. Because as, right, remember that I've got uh, entity framework code in my person factory that can't build because entity framework changed. So to solve that problem, what you do is you use something called compiler directives. So in code files where that happens, here's the thing, like 80 or 90% of your code will just compile. It'll just work, .NET Core and .NET Framework are that close, right? But for the parts that aren't, what you do is you say, ah, well here, if, if my code is compiling for .NET standard, then I'm going to use the new entity framework code. Otherwise, I'm going to use the old entity framework code. And so now I'm compiling the same DLL and I get two DLLs, the .NET Framework one to keep my current system running and the .NET Core version that I can start using testing and moving forward. Awesome? Great, I'm done, thank you. <laughs>